Hello there. I just want to do a quick shout out. My parents are in the audience tonight. <laughs> in the early 60s and 70s, they taught up in the bush villages in Alaska. And I really owe what I am today to them. So thanks for being here. OK, Bob. I never really had a choice in choosing my profession. It was in my blood. My grandparents were teachers. My parents were teachers. All my aunts and uncles were teachers. My sister-in-law, she teaches in Livingston. And I guess my brother could be called a teacher, too, since he teaches fly fishing. But I did have a choice in what type of teacher I would be. Always fun to p see pictures from the 70s. <laughs> Growing up in Big Timber, my best friend was mainly in the resource room or special ed. I could never understand this. Rob looked like everyone else. He was funny, he was a talented artist, and I knew he was smart. So why was he separated from the rest of us? Kids are not kind, and I know he was teased. Here's Rob with his chinchilla. Not until I was in college did I realize he has a learning disability, and it became my passion to teach children with learning disabilities how to read, write, and do math so they could be successful in the regular education classroom. The US Census reports that about 20% of the United States population has a learning disability. The majority of people that have a learning disability have an average or above average IQ. Because many of these students look normal, their disability is often misunderstood as laziness or lack of effort. They can be at risk for developing poor self-esteem, behavior problems, and even substance abuse, unless identified early and given appropriate intervention. I once worked with a 16-year-old boy who is now in prison. He had been expelled numerous times. He was obviously very intelligent, but was reading at the low second grade level. When I asked him how many times people told him he just needed to try harder, and he knew he was trying as hard as he could, he began crying and asked me, how did I know? Unfortunately, it was too little too late. The damage to his self-esteem was done. One type of invisible learning disability is dyslexia. Dyslexia involves an unexpected difficulty with reading and writing. So what is dyslexia? Dr. Sally Shaywitz, author of Overcoming Dyslexia and leading expert at Yale University, used fMRI imaging and found that people with learning disabilities' brains are wired differently than those without a disability. With dyslexia, an area in the brain that stores words after they're learned develops differently, so dyslexics don't learn to read by traditional methods. However, dyslexic brains have some advantages. They can view the world in 3D, which explains why letter reversals are common, because B, D, P, and Q are all really just the same letter. These brain differences allow them to think outside the box and visualize problems from multiple perspectives. Many talented and famous architects, surgeons, paleontologists, and lawyers have dyslexia. I worked with one family with five children that were all diagnosed with dyslexia. Their father was too. And he was very highly paid to design target stores so that you have to pass as much merchandise as possible to get to what the items that you need. Because he could visualize the entire store in 3D. Teaching people with dyslexia to read and spell takes effort, knowledge, training, and patience. Studies have found that a structured, sequential, and multisensory teaching method has been scientifically proven as the best way to teach people with dyslexia. This teaching method involves using kinesthetic learning with reading and spelling and direct instruction of the rules and generalizations of the English language. Think about it this way. After you learn to ride a bike, do you have to relearn how to ride it every spring? Or does your body just remember those repetitive muscle patterns? This is what we try to tap into. Using multisensory techniques for teaching reading means that students hear, see, say, and feel the sounds of the letters they're writing. You can see this student check his hand so he doesn't reverse the letter B when he writes. I spent the last 20 years in Minnesota teaching children with learning disabilities. I usually worked with each of my clients for an average of about eight years, so they became my children and my family too. I started working with these girls when the oldest was in third grade and the youngest was three years old. Morgan just graduated from Notre Dame, Mackenzie's a junior at Notre Dame, and the youngest Maggie is a senior in high school now, and she's trying to decide between Notre Dame and the University of Georgia. I have many favorite clients, but probably my most memorable was a 65-year-old man that looked like Santa Claus. He wanted to retire from a successful career programming die-cutting machines, and he wanted to get a part-time job and be able to read the newspaper. 
He was reading at the first grade level, and after two years of hard work, he read at the eighth grade level. He's the only client I had that we could share one of his homemade beers after tutoring. <laughs> I started working with Sam when he was in second grade. He has severe dyslexia, dysgraphia, which is problems with writing, ADHD, and to top it off, he has a speech disorder and a stutter. He was also the smartest kid I ever worked with. He has an IQ around 170. He's currently a sophomore in high school and has become an excellent writer. I learned as much from him as he learned from me. This is Bert. Bert makes me laugh every time I work with him. I started working with him in fifth grade and he was one of my more challenging students. His parents chose not to medicate him for ADHD, so I had to completely change my teaching style to help him. I still work with Bert on FaceTime and he's turned into an amazing young man that sends me random selfies. As much as I love my clients in Minnesota, Montana and my family were calling me home. I was overjoyed to find Cottonwood Day School, a private, nonprofit school here in Bozeman that shared my philosophy that all children can learn to read and write. As teachers, we just need to find a way that each child learns best. This is the only school in Montana that specifically teaches students with learning differences, the ones that can sometimes fall through the cracks in regular schools. All of our teachers have multi-sensory training and we match our curriculum to meet each child's individual needs. Cottonwood Day School accepts students with all different kinds of learning differences, not just dyslexia. We start our day with yoga and meditation and have a variety of tools to help children with sensory needs. We also have a counselor, a music therapist, and a full-time speech-language pathologist. We also work closely with occupational and physical therapists in the community to develop a comprehensive and holistic team for each of our students. I feel so blessed that Cottonwood Day School offered me a job back home in Montana. I get to work with the most wonderful and caring team of teachers, and teaching students with such a variety of needs is deeply rewarding. And best of all, I get to see my family and Rob whenever I want. Thank you.